Greetings. I was wondering this week, as you do, can you use a silicon controlled rectifier instead of an ordinary diode? Now, for those who don't know, a silicon controlled rectifier will conduct in one direction once power is applied to the gate signal, which on this SCR is the right hand pin. Once that's done, it will conduct between the anode, which on this is the middle pin, and the cathode, which is the left, and it'll stay on until the power drops down to zero or the current drops down to zero, in which it'll automatically turn off and wait for the next triggering on the gate pin. If you're wondering where, why this is of any use, look at a dimmer switch. A dimmer switch does exactly the same thing. It has a delayed trigger, then it knocks the power on right the way through until the end of the waveform when it stops and then the power is allowed to go up so far and then it turns on and goes along to the next zero crossing and turns off again. Well an SCR is similar to that but an SCR does it only in one direction. For, two dire for both directions you normally use a triac which is sort of like two SCRs in inverse parallel. But I digress. Can you use it as a diode? Well, I've got it set up here, and I need a diode here in line between the gate, between the supply and the gate, and in that direction. So the, the arrow of the diode, if you like, is pointing at the gate. Because what I can do here is I can use the trigger voltage, the, the supply, the anode side of the, the SCR, as the trigger voltage. As it's there, I should be able to just connect it directly, and in theory, the thing should just act then as a diode. It turns out, yes, it does. Here's my setup. There's a 100 watt, 12 volt AC transformer here, and a 35 watt halogen lamp. We've got our TIC 106D SCR. The fluke here is measuring the current flowing through the gate and the oscilloscope is watching the output waveform. Now the thing with the, the TIC 106D is it is very very sensitive. It doesn't take a lot to turn the gate on. Want to see? Wet fingers. I'll hold the tab on the SCR which is connected to anode. This wire is connected through that resistor through the diode to the gate. So this is going through me and it's enough to make the gate conduct. And you can see if, if I ease off a bit, you can see it's actually varying the cutoff time there. Or the turn on time, sorry. But that's very, very sensitive. So yes, you can, but what's the point of that? What, what use is that? Well, let's say you need a bridge rectifier. Okay, yeah, that's a bridge rectifier. What if you want something a bit beefier? Well, yes, okay, that takes it up to, I think that's a 25 amp bridge rectifier. But what if you want something like a 220 amp bridge rectifier? What are you going to do? Well, let's just say you want, let's say you want one of these 220 amp bridge rectifiers and you haven't got any 220 amp diodes lying around. All you've got is a couple of these SCRs. Can you do it? Damn right you can do it. Those will behave in much the same way as that TIC 106D there. They're just a bit less sensitive. Here's the wiring diagram for this SCR or pair of SCRs. You can see what we've got here is an SCR in line with another SCR. So if you thought of that as half of a bridge rectifier, it could be the top half or the bottom half. This would be your negative connection, that would be your AC, one of your AC inputs, that would be a positive. Have another one below it as well with the other side of the AC waveform and there you've got your bridge. On here you can see one connection, the cathode connection of each of the SCRs goes also to this red wire on the end here which we don't need and the gate is the white wire 
which we do need. So you connect your gate to there. And for this experiment, I'm going to use these connections here. So in fact, I'm using this SCR, which uses this white wire. Here's one I've prepared earlier. Much the same as before, except I've now taken the, the SCR out and wired it to the big one. This is a lot less sensitive than the other one. You can see at the moment it's actually drawing almost 10 milliamps through the gate and it hasn't even bothered turning on yet. In fact I can take that and what you'll see is it will climb and it will keep climbing as I turn this up which is lowering the resistance between the anode and the gate you can see we're connecting from there through through the diode through the meter and back to the gate if I keep on going all of a sudden We have power. It's quite a high resistance here, so it's delaying the turn on until the AC waveform is almost at the top. If it goes too high, then it goes to the point where the AC waveform never reaches high enough to turn on, so it just goes off like that. But as I turn the resistance down, You can see we get an almost total wave. I just turn that down. I can't really see the end there. Let's go back into storage mode. It's a little bit of a climb, but yeah, it's working as a half wave rectifier. You can see now at that minimum resistance it's only drawing 1.7 just just under 1.7 milliamps through the gate so the the resistor is optional all you need is a diode in between the anode and the gate pointing in the same direction as the SCR so you got both the anodes tied together cathode of the diode goes to the gate. Simple. All done. We have AC coming in on these two connections here. This is the positive bus bar. This is the negative bus bar. We have the gate connections with the diode inside the crimp connector. So there's one there, one there, one there and one there. And as you can see, it's running as a full wave diode bridge. Hope you find this useful. If not, then at least I hope you find it entertaining. If not, then I hope you at least find it informative. If not, then, well, there's no pleasing some people, is there? Thank you for watching.